Welcome to Rockcast. Dyson Production. an actual episode obviously um and uh have a interesting segment about dreams and the effect that quitting marijuana has on them i'll tell you what it was a bloody trip um yeah so i'll also be discussing a couple other things Perhaps my new shirt collection that I'm working on. And maybe a little segment on my dog. And bands I've been listening to lately. And possibly just an update on my life. Oh, and I also wanted to possibly put in a clip um, of my uh, comedy in here somewhere. I cover a lot of... A lot of situation so that's what we're talking about today so please enjoy this little segment here i'm going to be talking about quitting marijuana and the effects it has on your dreaming specifically rem which is other than a defunct 80s pop band uh the most important part of your sleep that's when the heavy lifting gets done. That's when your brain decides that it's going to work on stuff and it's going to uh, make sure that, that you can deal with your day. And what I'm finding is it's literally helping me deal with anxiety. I think a lot of the anxiety since... Let's see, I started smoking weed when I was around 13, 14 years old and I went straight heavy-ass stoner. Oh, dude, you know, like every day, eights a day that I could get. Let's be honest, back then I was a broke, broke, desolate teenager, so I was only smoking a gram or two a day when I could, but believe me, I was hanging out with anyone and everyone that ever had weed and making sure that I was getting high AF, as the cool kids would say. Also about the same time, I discovered LSD, mushrooms, uh, still innocent, didn't really get into the other hard drugs until I was in probably around 17, 18 almost, late bloomer, I guess you could say. So yeah, um, right now you are listening to Decepticide, an Alaskan metal band, probably the best Alaskan metal band in my personal opinion. Um, I can get into the whole thing about that one day, but right now that is not what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about... The effect of marijuana on your dreams. And I have looked up a little article here. And we're going to go ahead and switch to that right now. Uh, and actually have it up on my screen so you can read along with me. I will be reading it. I'll kind of kind of skim through it. Get to the good stuff. Uh, the article is by... Samoon Hamad MD and the Integrative Center for Wellness. I looked through a different couple ones and this one was, uh, I don't know, the one that I liked and seems to cover exactly what I want to talk about. So yeah, let's get some uh, Machine Corpse going here for my background music. I am a metalhead and a musician and I like having music playing while I'm doing my rock cast. So I don't know how that's going to go through or if people will like it. I don't really care. It's what I'm going to do. So I quit smoking weed. Like I said, I've been smoking since I was 14 about two years ago. And, uh, or two years ago, I wish. Two months ago. Um, I'm four years, almost four years sober off of alcohol. The demon itself. Right now, I drink uh, Heineken Zeros because I like the taste of beer. Believe it or not, not something I'd ever thought that I'd hear myself say, but it's true. Got to keep the throat moist. Uh, yeah, by all means, if Heineken wants to sponsor me, I love your uh, alcohol-free beer, and I designate a driver whenever I want. So uh, it took about two days, and then all of a sudden, man, I went into dream fucking land. And by dream land, I mean, holy gosh darn nightmares. I was 
freaking out seeing shit demons uh, everything I could think of that's ever gone wrong in my life was like my brain woke up and now my philosophy was well you know I haven't been able to dream in a long time I have heard somewhere or read somewhere that when you smoke weed or you drink yourself to sleep you don't hit the actual REM level of sleeping so I'm gonna read this to you and it's on the screen of course so you can read yourself uh, about this uh, my handy dandy scrolling here look at that look at that uh, so futuristic so here we go the effect of marijuana on your dreams so da -da 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 -da. let's stop scrolling like an idiot and here we go when you think of the effects of marijuana you might think of the movies stoner montages and teen party sequences you might be a regular or an occasional user or have experimented with the substance at some point in your life. But one thing you probably don't consider when you think of marijuana is how it affects your dreams. I'd say differently. I always assumed that it would kind of enhance your dreams, right? Marijuana seems to enhance everything else. Why not your dream? Cannabis typically acts as a prohibitor of dreams, suppressing REM cycle sleep in which dreaming occurs. After extended use, however, abruptly quitting marijuana can lead to intense dreams. Vivid dreams after stopping marijuana use can even be lucid where the dreamer is aware of the dream. And let me tell you what, that has definitely effing happened to me. Uh, and whenever in my whole life, whenever I lucid dream, the first thing I do, and feel free to comment about any lucid dreams you've had or what you may have gone through, but I, I, uh... I fly. I fly like a little kid. I, I just, like, a, and it's like the scary vampire movies where you're just super fast and I just fly around and basically do what I want. So, you must ask yourself, why does this happen? Well, our own Dr. Samoon Hamid, and I hope I'm saying this man, uh, man's name correctly, described to Business Insider exactly how it worst. So, Here's uh, some information here. Marijuana and the stages of sleep. During sleep, your body goes through four stages of non-REM or NREM sleep, followed by a separate REM or rapid eye movement stage. It's during REM sleep when dreaming occurs. Most sleepers go through these five sta stages several times in a given night. I didn't know that. And so might enter REM sleep a few times a night. And then it says, in fact, it's a little more complicated than that. Things like the time of the night you go to sleep can affect how long you spend dreaming. I'm very interested in, in dreaming and sleep. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, the, it's the hard work when you think you're just passed out that's happening in your head that keeps you sane. <laughs> So people who use marijuana tend, I'm just going to say this ahead of time, all of this that I'm saying is from this Dr. Samoon. Uh, obviously, these are not my own ideas. I will interject my comments throughout it, but it's, I'm, I'm not a smart person. Okay, don't, don't get me confused with a smart person, please. That'd be too much responsibility for me to bear. People who use marijuana tend to suppress REM sleep. They have less REM sleep. When you have less REM sleep, as he explains, you'll have fewer dreams. Seems fairly obvious. Having fewer dreams, however, doesn't seem to be a permanent effect. Once people stop smoking, suddenly there's a rebound phenomena. Oh my God, I can't say that word right. Where people can have quite vivid dreams. Happens as your body tries to catch up on missed REM opportunities. Fortunately, it appears to be temporary. In most cases, dreamers only have these vivid Max Fleischer dreams for a few weeks after marijuana cessation. This rebound phenomena, phenomena, I can't say that fucking word, uh, to have these vivid Max Fleischer dreams for a few weeks after marijuana cessation. Since drugs and their effects affect individuals differently, you'll want to discuss with a doctor or even a doctor of holistic medicine when to start, stop, or change any drugs that you may be taking, including marijuana. Well, here's a so, handy little chart right here. So, yeah, and they're all NREM stage one, NMR stage two, and NREM stage, which is non-rapid eye movement, obviously, and then REM. 
So your body goes through a lot. Here's some of the uh, things that sleep does for you. It repairs muscles. You grow bones. What? I didn't know that. You manage hormones and you sort memories. Kind of what we used to call defragmenting because uh, everything gets all jumbled up in there. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. My anxiety has gone down so much since I quit smoking weed. I think uh, quite a few years ago it started turning on me, actually. I don't know. I don't know why or what happened. I mean, I just love weed, but you, you can't. I don't know. I've done doing the same damn thing since I was 14 years old. That you know, we're we're evolutionary creatures. Maybe the brain panics or something when it doesn't get change or new stimulation. I know working at the weed store, I wasn't getting high anymore because I had never-ending access to marijuana. And on that note too, you know, I am a stoner. I am a. Uh, I I. I like smoking weed with other people. It was a ritual. Um, COVID came along, kind of took that away. People didn't really want to smoke the weed anymore with people. You you couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't share it. You couldn't do any of that because you were afraid you were going to get sick. And it just it wasn't fun anymore. You know what I mean? Like I. Uh, I think that was a big killer for me and on top of that it just i had to smoke so much weed like and all this and then you get you get extractions on your weed and, and dabs and sleep can be broadly segmented into rapid eye movement sleep and non rapid eye movement in rem versus rem sleep again not the band most adults will enter sleep from a drowsy state into nrem sleep NREM sleep is divided into three sub-stages, stage N1, stage N2, and of course, stage N3. Older classifications had four stages in the current rules. NREM stage 3 and NMR stage 4 are combined as stage 3. Huh, interesting. Sleep stages occur in cycles lasting 90 to 120 minutes each. Four to five cycles occur during a typical night of sleep. Shifting of stages occurs over the course of the night, typically with an increased percentage of NREM sleep in the first half of the night and an increased percentage of REM sleep in the second half of the night. So, basically, we're just going to find out what each of those one mean. Dun, 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 dun. This is very interesting to me, actually. I hope it's interesting to you because the last thing I need is to bore your asses. Oh, maybe we learn something together. Non-REM sleep happens first and includes three stages. The last stage is when your body sleeps deeply. It's hard to wake up from this stage of sleep. REM sleep happens about an hour to an hour and a half after falling asleep. REM sleep is when you tend to have vivid dreams. So, stage N1. This stage of non-REM sleep is a typical transition from wakefulness to sleep and generally lasts only a few minutes. Stage N1 is the lightest stage of sleeping patients. Awaken from it usually don't preserve that they were actually asleep. I was just resting my eyes. Which, maybe I'll throw the clip in here the other day of me nodding off on trying to do this one live. And I, I am old and I needed a nap and I decided to take a seven and a half second nap while I was actually uh, filming live so I took that one off the air because that was embarrassing oh that's awesome that's funny I uh, literally think I just fell asleep for a second there <laughs> So during this stage, eye movements are typically slow and rolling. Heartbeat and your breathing slow down. Your muscles begin to relax. And you produce low amplitudes mixed frequency waves in the theta range of 4 to 7 hertz. Uh, that's a whole other thing to go into. The next stage of non r You know, by the way, I am, I am not claiming to be educated or know anything. I am learning this as I go as I tend to do, and uh, I claim nothing otherwise, okay? 
number two. N-R-E-M stage number two. This next stage of non-REM sleep compromises the largest percentage of total sleep time and is considered a lighter stage of sleep from which you can be awakened easily. This is the stage before you go bloop, go under. Your heart breathe and slow your heartbeat and breathing slow down further. There are no eye movements. Your body temperature drops and sleep splendles and K complexes are two distinct brainwave features that appear for the first time. Starting to hit the next universe, baby. This is all really interesting to me, man. Holy shit. As you do segments called dummies trying to figure shit out. The final stage of non-REM sleep is the deepest sleep stage. Stage N3 sleep is known as slow wave or delta sleep. Your body performs a variety of important health promoting tasks in this final non-REM stage. So before you get to go into the fucking woos, your body's doing a bunch of work. And uh, during this stage, arousal from sleep is difficult. Your heartbeat and breathing are at their slowest rate. No eye movement. Body is fully relaxed. The delta brain waves are present. What's up, delta brain waves? Tissue repair and growth and cell regeneration occurs and your immune system strengthens. You see, this is why they're saying that sleep is so important. And it also goes into the different time types of naps you take and where their benefits are and how you could come out of a nap, you know? You don't want to go all the way into REM sleep and take a fucking two-hour nap and then try to wake up and go back to work. That one sucks, you know? That's where cat naps and stuff like that come in handy. Uh, again, just slightly knowledgeable on some of that stuff because of things I've either read or whatever. Uh, at my age, I'm 312 years old. Um, no, 49 years old. Uh, I need naps. I like naps. I've never needed them before, but I also never needed my flu shot before or pneumonia shots or anything because I was strong. Also, keep in mind, if you don't know this, I have an autoimmune disorder, rheumatoid arthritis, and therefore my body doesn't always do what the heck it's supposed to do anyways. So, yeah. So now we go into REM stage R. There are two phases of REM sleep, phasic and tonic. Phasic REM sleep contains bursts of rabbit eye movements, while tonic REM sleep does not. Fascinating. During this stage, eye movements become rapid during phasic REM. Breathing and heart rate increases and becomes more variable. Muscles become paralyzes, but twitches may appear, and brain activity is markedly increased. So, when you fall asleep at night, you cycle through all these stages of sleep multiple times, roughly every 90 minutes or so. Huh. Human beings spend one-third of their lives sleeping while cats, I don't care about cats. Newborn babies need roughly 14 to 17 hours of sleep per day because they're building their shit, right? Most adults need seven to nine, which is good because I average usually six to eight. Sleep deprivation can have huge, see I'm already yawning. Sleep deprivation can have hugely negative impact on health. Even as little as 24 hours without sleep could cause significant mood swings, difficulty functioning, and altered perceptions. Good name for a band. Your energy levels naturally dip at two distinct times of the day, 12 to 2 p.m. and 8 to 9 p.m. What time is it right now? I don't have my watch on. Right now it is 4.12 p.m. So I'm good. I'm good. This explains the post-lunch fatigue and that some people feel during the middle of the day. Higher altitudes can have an effect on sleep quality, a negative effect on sleep quality. That's crazy. Let's see. Number of people annually who experience sleep disorders, about 70 million. That's a lot of grumpy bastards out there. Yep, insomnia. These are all things I would love to actually get into. If you are interested in any of this, please let me know in the comments below. Or if you have any of these issues or any of that narcolepsy, oh, that's tips to get better sleep. See, I think I think I'm going to uh, 
go through all that. But I will say this, uh, the bottom line here, as you can see on the screen, is that your body cycles through the stages of sleep each night, three stages of non-REM sleep and one stage of REM sleep. During these sleep cycles, our breathing, heart rate, muscles, and brain waves are all affected differently. Getting enough sleep is important for health-promoting activities like digestion, growth, and memory. Certain sleep disorders like insomnia could cause poor sleep quality and difficulty functioning throughout the day. Huh. And it says the best thing you can do to improve your sleep quality is to address any underlying conditions and work on your sleep. So, yeah. So you could see how if you're doing something that disrupts your typical sleeping thing that uh, I read this in another article, you may have difficulty remembering stuff or getting tasks done and little things like that, which as a hardcore stoner, I'm going to tell you, I would have never bought into that. I've always, there was, there was no, and, it, and it really isn't the worst thing. I know, I know from personal experience that falling asleep drunk uh, was way worse and more detrimental to me ever than getting baked and waking up all groggy and shit the next day from being stoned or eating too many edibles or anything like that. So this was just a subject that I thought was interesting and I thought I would bring it up. And it looks like I might just make this one whole little rock cast. And if people are interested in uh, hearing more about this or me rambling on about it to my few select people that want to hear about it, let me know in the comments below. If I'm wrong about anything, let me know in the comments below. If you want me to just shut up and never talk again, <laughs> it's not going to happen. So anyways, that was my little spiel on the effects of marijuana on your dreams. And I'll tell you, I thought maybe I had, like I said, I had my own theory as to what was going on and I wasn't a hundred percent wrong, but I wasn't exactly right. And I learned a little bit today about sleep and what you go through, you know, they're always updating this shit. They're always telling you more new research has been done and everything else. And it's always good to learn. But I think, uh, Sleep is a beautiful thing to recharge our bodies, keep shit in order, and I'm not going to lie, I've been feeling a lot better since I quit smoking weed. Obviously, quit drinking and felt way better because of that. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So, I think uh, I'm going to tag out here. Um, like I said, please leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel. This is going to get better as I go along. Someday I'll have a producer that could deal with all of this shit and I could just be set up and film and it'd be nice. Uh, yeah, awesome. OBS is what I use and I'll be using Sony Vegas to edit. And I think, like I said, I might just put this out as a segment. So before I get too sleepy and not off on the camera again, oh, and there's Gypsy back there being a good girl. Look at her stretching. Hi, Gypsy. Pretty girl. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, and any ideas or anything you want to talk about, let me know. Rockcast 2.0. I'm going to be coming out with uh, more interviews again and ideas. And of course, I'll do some live broadcasts. But the problem with the live broadcast is you can't do this. And uh, when the finished product is done, it will hopefully look a lot better. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, cool little facts about it and if you decide to quit smoking weed brace yourself because your brain's got some shit to work through and uh, I can tell you straight up I feel great it's almost been two months I don't even really remember having had an exact date I will say this I started to quit smoking weed uh, by switching to CBD and stuff. I was I was having huge anxiety attacks and shit. I wouldn't mind getting into that too. So these are just segments of me uh, sharing what I find fascinating with you. And uh, I'm still dreaming every night, but they're, they're calming down a little bit. This first was like three weeks of the craziest shit. Hmm. Three, two, one. Three weeks of the craziest shit. Like, I, that's where I was like, I think my brain's just working on shit since I was 14. And uh, and it's weird because when you wake up and you remember your dreams, 
uh, they all seem to be kind of in a chronological order of shit that I've been through in my life. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. You can find me on Facebook at Rockcast. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, Rot420 on Facebook or Rotcast on YouTube. The information is down there. Down there, so you're going. And uh, Rot loves you all. And dude, I fucking miss smoking weed. I'm not gonna lie, I love weed. But I'm, I've been on a trip lately about uh, seeing what's going on in this here brain of mine. And that's not the worst thing ever. So yeah, I think I'm gonna. Put my exit music in later. I don't know. This might just be a part of a segment. Also, I'm gonna talk about books, and metal, and shit, all of that crap. Man, it's just uh, it is what it is, and I don't know what it is yet. I've been doing these now for a couple of years, and if you look back, you can see a wide variety of stuff. But I would like to think this is my most professional-looking one, and uh, yeah. So, have a good day, human. Rattles it all. Bye. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is a Dinosaur Production. production. The the music 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 is all 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 alone. Stay the same. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal. Hoorah!